Yo, what's poppin' guys? It's your boy Crooks the Great, and we're back out here with another banger of a UFC 4 video. And this time we're gonna be using Dan Ige in the featherweight division. Now, I wanted to use Dan Ige and make another video with him because it has been seven months since my last Dan Ige video, and that was probably around the time he got added to the game. So we're gonna be using him here in this video. We're gonna go up against Max Holloway in the first fight. Now if you guys know and have played UFC 4 for a long time, you guys will know that Max Holloway is the meta fighter in Featherweight. He's very, very hard to knock out. He's very, very hard to to fight because he can he can tend to be a knee and elbow spammer if somebody uses him in that way. He can helicopter. The dude has powerful jab straights as well as a very, very good switch stance. But his weakness is his leg health. So we're going to try to be chopping at that as you see right there. This guy's trying to punch back. He's in southpaw. Now, I see he's moving off laterally. So, we're going to utilize the leg kicks to try to slow down his movement just a little bit. So, yeah, we're hitting him with a good four-piece combination. Blocking that jab straight. He hits us with a nice spin back kick to the body. The jab interrupts him. So, now we're just taking our time. With Dan Ige, we don't want to rush because we know that we're at a stat disadvantage against the Max Holloway. So we're just trying to take our time. He's chopping back with the leg kicks. Good stuff. Good spinning back kick to the body again. So you see how I'm just taking my time. I already know what his game plan is. His game plan is just to stay on that back foot and try to get us to make a mistake and be overly aggressive. But we're picking and choosing our spots when to launch off combinations and when to possibly just throw a two-piece and then back out and reset. That spinning back body kick is hitting us a lot. So we might need to try to back. We need to try to minor step that if at all possible. Misses on that overhand. So now we're pressing forward. We're just putting putting the pressure on him just a little bit. Go down to that body. Because I notice he's trying to major lunge off as well. So we can maybe possibly catch him with a, a body hook and get a body rock. But so far so good. Good body kick into a straight right there by him though. You know, got to be careful with how much damage we're taking against Max. We're fainting off. Threatening with the slips. There's the body hook into a, a lead hook, but it misses. Misses on the kick. We straight it to counter it. So this round kind of I'm just taking as a feeler. Just to try to really see what this guy is doing. I'm not really pressuring him too much. Just trying to feint him off, get his mind thinking. Cracking those leg kicks just to get him to lower his block. There's that spinning back kick to the body again. Tries the cartwheel kick but misses. We miss on the combination. Crack him right there with a good two-piece. Hurt him. Now we have him rock for the first time. We're trying to keep him up against that cage. He's trying to go with that cartwheel kick. Breaking down the block with a nice four-piece. Jab straightening out of that corner. Good jab calf kick right there by him. So, we, we got what we needed to secure the round with Dan Ige. We got that rock that's going to win us this round. And that's going to be the end of the first round. Now, very, very solid first round for us with Dan Ige. We didn't take too much damage. We got that rock off. We hurt him. We're cracking at that leg, so we're just trying to lower that block, trying to get him to think, and also trying to slow down that lateral movement that he's using to, to escape out of the corner. We're throwing those body hooks, so we're going to try to mix... All of that stuff in here in this second round if he doesn't make any adjustments. Which it doesn't look like he is. He immediately goes back to Southpaw. I could see he's he's trying to throw a little bit more. But now he's he, he's gone back to his original strategy here. So we're going to press forward. Put a little more pressure on him. Crack that good, that good leg kick. Good calf kick by him. Look at that. That's what we don't want. We don't want him escaping out of the corner like that without taking some kind of damage. So I can see him shifting his block up and down, which lets me know if I just faint any kind of strike and then come with a good uh, with a good straight or a good hook behind it, it's going to land. So we crack him with a good three-piece, hurt him, go down to the body, then back up to the head. Trying to knock him down. We do get a knockdown right there with Dan Ige, but it's not going to get us a, a ground and pound event. But we're throwing those knees to the legs just to keep on that leg damage. So now we're in southpaw. It's not really where we should be yet, so we're going to try to switch over to Orthodox. There we go. 
Now, so far, so good. It doesn't look like he's making too many adjustments, so we're just going to keep hammering on the damage to those legs and trying to trap him in that corner, and then when we do, we're going to unleash some combinations. Good major lunge out of the way. Good slip straight right there by us. He's leading off with jabs a lot, so that slip straight is going to be there. We threw a body kick out of improper range, but he didn't make us pay, unfortunately, for him right there. Misses on the head kick. We go down to the body, then back up to the head. So now I can feel this guy starting to break. He's trying to speed up his timing a little bit, but that's going to be playing straight into our hands because we're just throwing two-piece combinations, which means we can reset and throw a four-piece as we catch him with a beautifully timed head kick right there off of a major lunge. Hurt him. Now we have him up against the cage. just where we want him unloading right there. He's hurt. Now we're in a ground and pound scenario with Dan Ige. We land the first two ground and pound strikes and land a hook and put him to sleep. That head kick did the damage and then the three piece just broke through his block and got us the dub. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the second fight that we have. Now here we are guys, we're in the second fight of the video and we're taking on the other meta fighter in featherweight and that is connor the notorious mcgregor even though this is the old connor the old connor still has a lot of fucking power now has a lot of power so this is going to make for a very intriguing matchup we're going up against j spy he's trying to bow and respect but we already touched gloves so now we're trying to apply a little bit of pressure now with connor you kind of have to have the same strategy i'm going to try to chop out his legs to try to get him to stay primarily in orthodox. I don't want him in southpaw if if I can help it. And we're jabbing. Just keeping that good rhythm on him so far. Pressure him. We get him right there with the clinch. We're going to try to get him down as well. Because Connor does not have the best ground game. And there we are able to do so. We're going to reset into his full guard here. And we're just punching to the body. He's trying to go for that get up off of the bottom transition. We're going to transition there into half guard. But good stuff by him. He rolls into sprawl. We're going to take backside. He's going to try to get up, but we're not having that. We're just going to block that. We're going to try to go for back mount, but he's on it. Good stuff. This lets me know this guy knows what he's doing, Just even if it's just a little bit. He gets up here. We're going to have his back. We're not going to jump in the backpack. We're going to try to get him with the back sitting, but he denies it. Good stuff. But that's just going to keep it in his mind that, you know what? This guy's, this guy's actually going to try to take me down. So we're just taking our time, cracking that calf kickoff, utilizing the jab, which I talked about last night in the stream. A good jab can go a long way in this game, let me tell you. So I see him trying to chop out my legs back. He plants right there, good stuff, lands a good two-piece. Can't take too many of those uh, in a row, to be honest with you. There's a good body kick right there by him. So now he's in southpaw. We're mixing up the combinations just a little bit. Good slip straight right there off of his straight that he threw. We're going to try to get him in the side saddle, but we're not able to. But we did get good damage off that slip straight. Good spinning back body kick right there by him. Double jabbing just to enter in the pocket. We're trying to slip off. Good jab straight right there. Lands into a leg kick. Ooh, good slip right there into a, a two-piece combination right there by him. we got to be careful because if he throws a slip hook, we're going to be in trouble. We sidestep that, hurt him, get him with a good straight. Jab in to close that distance right there. Good pull counter there by us. So now we're putting the pressure on him. He's re trying to respond back, but we respond with a four-piece combination and hurt him. Now we're in a ground and pound scenario here, but he is able to get the jujitsu sweep with Connor, man. That's the most frustrating thing ever when you get a knockdown and somebody just jujitsu sweeps you in or bjj sweeps you into full mount man it's it could be a problem especially with somebody that has heavy hands like connor it could really really end a fight with five seconds left we're just gonna try not to take too many damn too much damage and that's the end of the first round now we did hurt him twice in that round we stunned him once and we got a knockdown the next so very very solid round from us right there so we're going to try to maintain that momentum heading into the second round and try to make adjustments if he makes adjustments. But if he doesn't, I, I'm feeling really good about the way that this fight is going. There's that spinning back body kick. 
Hits us with a good roundhouse to the body again as he's in the opposite stance, which is good stuff. We slip right there. Rip to the body. Catch him with a good jab hook. Drop him again right there. Mixing it up to the body, then to the head. Now I'm starting to put a lot of pressure on him, and I can feel him starting to break. But he did a good slip. A good slip combination right there that made us retreat for just a second. He's missing on that kick to the head. Launching off a good three-piece. Hurt him again right there. Ripping down to the body three times. He's trying to go with that uppercut to keep to prevent us from ripping down to the body. Trying to go with the leg kick, but he did a good job of blocking it. Catch him with a good two-piece, but the, the other two com or the other two piece does not land, unfortunately. Good jab hook right there by us. We have him in a ground and pound scenario again. We're launching off hooks because we do not want to get swept by Connor again. He's going to pull us down into his full guard. Trying to work it here. He's throwing elbows to gain that GA. We fake. We block the back sitting transition right there. We're going to go to stack guard here and try to rain off some good ground and pound strikes, but he did slip one. And he's going to be able to get back up. But on the feet, we've done so much damage to him that we're not too much worried about exchanging in the pocket with him anymore as we were earlier. Hits us with a good spinning heel, but we're still maintaining that pressure. Good sidestep right there by us into a straight. Hurts him, drops him, and we're going for the finish here. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to get it. We're not, unfortunately. But we hurt him again. We're going to posture up right here. Go with the ground and pound again. Just to break down that block a little bit more. Get some damage off. We're not really looking to get the finish right there. He goes to sprawl. I'm going to throw a punch. And then we're going to try to go to backside. If we can. Which we do successfully do right there. He goes for the get up. We block it again. This time we're going to posture up and try to get ground and pound damage off again. I tried to roll him into side control. But it didn't work. But we'll take that side control instead. He's going to get back in his ball. So we're just going to chop at his body. We're going to chop at his body. We're not being able to get too much damage off. He's doing a good job of, uh, of putting himself in situations where he can't take damage. We block that get up right there. We're going to go for the ghillie just to see how good his submission defense is. And it's looking pretty solid. Looking pretty solid. This is, this is a pretty hard uh, guillotine to get unless your opponent has like super low stamina. So we give up on it right there. Transition to backside again. He's going to get the get up right here. So we're going to go for the backpack, which we are successful in doing. And he throws us back. So we're in back sitting right here. We're going to go back to backside and try to posture up and get some damage off. But he's doing a good job of blocking. And with five seconds left, we're just going to let him get up. That's going to be the end of the second round. Now, we did a lot of damage with Dan Ige in that round. Very, very clean round for us right there. We didn't get hurt. We hurt him multiple times in that round. I know his head health is super low. Uh, we got him on the ground. We were able to hold him there. We didn't let him uh, reverse us in any position that we were in. So we're looking good going into this third round. I feel very, very confident in the way that this fight is going. As you've seen that beautiful minor step off of that missed kick that he tried to throw that really got us into that last ground and pound scenario. But here we go. We are getting into the third round and we're underway. Touch gloves and a show of respect, and we're back at it. He's trying to hit us with that spinning heel kick. Good slip counter right there by him. We're applying the pressure. Get hit him with a good hook right there. Break it through the block. Hurt him. Now we're in another ground and pound scenario, and we're going to be able to get the dub early in the third round just off of the accumulation of damage with Dan Ige. This dude has hands of fucking steel, let me tell you. His hands and his boxing combinations felt real, real nice in these last two fights. Even up against the meta fighters, he feels very, very good. But that's going to be it for the video, guys. If you guys did enjoy this video and you guys are new to the channel, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. I do post a lot of UFC 4 content on the, on the channel, whether that be streaming or videos. But until the next video, guys, make sure to slap that like button as well. Um, until the next video, make sure... To take it easy, be safe. Thank you guys for stopping by again, and I will see you guys in the next one.